Hmm. How do I look? Do I have something in my teeth? Okay. Oh, hey, hi, <laughs> you caught me. Hey, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville and I'm just about ready to unbox this pile of machines behind me. Now, I don't know which box should I open first? Like maybe the case, you know, those are really cute. Um, maybe the box of goodies. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> Amy's recommending the machine itself. All right, well, here's the machine and you know, here's the deal. There are some people that cut the straps and there are other people that gently glide them off the box. I cut, but with only my finest uh, $1 scissors possible here. So, straps are cut. Maybe I need those later. I'll go back and get them. But you know what? If we're gonna unbox this together, you're gonna have to come down here with me. All right, you can do it. I know, I know, bones are a little creaky. It was a rough BU. Here we go, all right. <laughs> so, okay, first of all, I wanna point out the improvements. There is a diagram of how everything goes into the box right there in the lid. Now, for those of you that are buying this machine and taking it home, you don't flip and care about that, but let me tell you what, Bernina dealers throughout the land give a hoot, all right? So, yay, thank you. Johannes and Henry and anybody else responsible for figuring that one out. All right, now, here we go. Still opening. Do you know what? It's a familiar sight right here, all of the styrofoam, but let's, let's have a look here. Okay, the first layer of styrofoam. Extra thread, the thing we're not supposed to eat. All right, let me just put this aside carefully. Then our slide on table. Now, no big surprise here. It's just like the other slide on tables. Well, except for the 880 one, which gives you an additional two inches. And some of you have been asking, Gail, tell me the difference between the 790 Pro and an 880. Well, we'll start two inches. Size matters. Another layer of styrofoam. A freehand system. Now, I didn't bother asking if this is the same freehand system for the 7 Series or the 8 Series, but I'm making a plea right now to anybody at Bernina International that's watching. I would like a different color handle for the L890s and 850s and 860s and the 880 Pluses. Just, just give me a different color. You know, I am partial to teal, but black would be fine. I'm pretty sure this is a 7 Series freehand system. All right, then we've got our accessory box. We're gonna load this in just a moment and we'll go through all of the feet that this baby comes with. All right, power cord. Let me tell you, there's a power cord shortage here at Bernain of Naperville. We can certainly use this. I'm gonna put this over here with the other seven series machines. There we go. All right, then in here, we've got our feet that aren't in the tray. Our bobbins, two, three, there's five in here and one in the machine. Then we've got a number 20 C foot for your decorative stitches. You saw, me, you saw me use that at BU in my class. And then we've got a zipper foot with the dual feed. And you know, you can tell the dual feed because they've got the little split like this, but then also they say D on them. Then we've got a blind hem foot for doing blind hems and other tomfoolery. And then we've got a 2A foot for overcasting your stitches if you don't have a serger, but you did hear about our special offer, right? If you pre-order a Bernina 790 Pro, we're gonna give you a free L850, but more about that later. In the interim, you can do some kind of overcast stitch with the machine. Then we have a uh, number 8D, once again, with that suitable for that dual feed. And remember, you don't use a dual feed foot without pulling down that little dual feed mechanism. Then we have a 1D. There it is. Straight stitch needle plate. 40C for the sideways motion. You all were really worried that this wasn't gonna have sideways motion, but it does. And it has the stitch designer. I love it. And then Earl, oil, and I said the stylus, right? Okay, Whew. here's another foot, ready? 
The Bernina Stitch Regulator. So the Bernina Stitch Regulator is removable on this model, plugs into the back of the machine, then boop, 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 you get the uh, stitch regulator screen. And also the stitch regulator itself comes with an echo quilting sole. That's that big plastic sole that's also good for super puffy batting. Open toe sole so your old eyes can see exactly where you're going or your young eyes. And the standard darning sole. And this little guy here attaches to the machine slide on table and it gives you an external seam guide and I like to use it for flounces. I need a break. I'm gonna go grab a glass of water before I lift this guy out of this box. I'm sorry, I'm very famished. I got dehydrated in Dallas. All right. There's a few more things in here. All right, so there's this book, it's called a manual. I don't use it very often, but you know, let's have a look at it. So what's in this box, some of you will be really pleased to find out that there is a little advert for the uh, software nine, hang on to that. Our limited warranty is a promise sealed with a gift. You get a little gift with this machine. And um, it's uh, two years in case of the electrical parts. That's your power cord and your foot control because people sometimes cut those with rotary cutters by accident and drop their foot controls down the stairs. Ask me how I know. Okay, five years in case of printed circuit boards and then 20 years in case of mechanical parts. So all you have to do is go to Bernina.com and set up a portal and your information and everything for yourself. And if you haven't done that yet, it's awesome. They send you special emails, they send you coupons, all of those good, awesome things. Plus, all you have to do is register once because you know, some of you, you got a fair more machines than just one, right? Because you're gonna get a serger from us, you're gonna get this machine, you probably have maybe an older machine out there or whatever. And once you register one, you can just keep adding the same ones to your customer card. And you know, then if you forget a model, you can log in here at the dealership and be like, oh yeah, Gail, that other machine I have is a 1630 or whatever. So you know what, don't forget to do that. Then we've got a laminated sheet of little cheat sheets for your, um, you know, when you forget what the icons mean. Um, yeah, that's handy. Bernina accessories, oh my God. This, you know what, I enjoy just looking at the accessories catalog myself. It's just something to drool over or keep score for all of the things that you already have. And there is gonna be another video because Bernina came out with two new accessories this year. And one of them is something you've been asking and asking and asking for. And that is the medium clamp hoop, square hoop things sister the little sister, and that is a six inch square clamp hoop. So we'll talk about that um, a little bit later when I get my hands on one. Mm. But for now, I know you wanna see more of this accessories manual. You know, I and there's these aren't sold separately. You have to get a 790 Pro to see this brand new one. All right, so then, then there's the manual. I don't know, should we go through this and read it before we open the machine? It might be a good idea. I don't wanna do anything that might be considered rogue. Okay, I'll put it over here with the others. All right, I need another sip of water. Oh yeah, and going back to that warranty thing again, did you know that Bernina of Naperville within the first year gives you all the free labor and we even give you a free needle threader you know, this one has a different needle threader. You're not gonna need it to be replaced, but your first one's free. The next ones, unfortunately, do have a cost, but that is a special perk that we do. We also give you a free first year cleaning and infinite amount of mastery classes or owner's classes as we call them here. And uh, we have short programs so that, you know, we don't try to fill your head with an all day curriculum. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about, you know, what direction you're gonna point your car to when you come for a demo or you wanna put some money down on this pre-order. And that's right, we're gonna show you how to use that super awesome L850 as well. All right, on with the program. 
Here we go. Oh, so it's down here. I'm just gonna pull all the styrofoam out. Here it goes. Dust cover. There's no dust in this store, ladies and gentlemen. Not a speck. All right, so I'm just gently getting this guy out of here. This is so exciting. Oh my, I wish you could see it. It's amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. It's coming. <laughs> now we can see. Let's put it up here. Just a minute. Dun dun na na na. Bum 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 bum. Dun dun na na na. Dun dun. Da, da. I can bring home a Bernina, da, da, na, na, na. an LA 50 Serger too. Da, 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 da. I'm even strong enough to tilt it up for you. It's the pro stitching too. And yeah, let's get it on the table and have a look at it. Before we go back to that machine, you need to look down in here. Don't cry to me or call and be like, Gail, you didn't include a foot control. It's hidden down there in the styrofoam, but it's in the top of that diagram too. Now we have the power. Oh, and one more thing. Don't throw the styrofoam away yet because there's something in here that's even more hidden. In here. 3A, automatic button pull foot down there with the machine. It can't be separate from its little mommy machine for too long. It's gotta hang out with her right down there. Don't forget. All right. Oh my God, I'm warm. Okay, so now we're gonna open up our accessory case. And as you may or may not know, these accessory cases have these little feet on the back of them to help them stand up straight like that. And then also in here, we have extra tools. So in here is the foam pads and the dust brush and things like that, an extra set of needles. So you can see that. Two foam pads, because wherever the thread goes, ladies and gentlemen, the foam pad goes. So I'm gonna save one for my machine. And then we're gonna use one of these spool caps and the spool cap should match the thread that you're using. And if you haven't, please watch our best threading practices. And we go through all of these things in that video, but um, I'm gonna be using probably a Mettler thread. And so I'm just gonna use this medium spool cap there. But I'm gonna take these other pieces and put them right in here. And you know, there are some of you that are gonna wanna put these feet in in numerical order. I'm not that person. Then we have our bobbins, and you can either keep them in here or you can load them in here. Now, if you load them into that bobbin holder, I wanna show you a little trick. You know how you can only put the bobbins on one way, and I call it disco down, because you put those little shiny things down, and they go down into the bobbin case and you don't see them? Well, that also, they're, they're just a little bit longer on one side than the other, and these bobbin holders are designed that way. So you're gonna put the plain side in where the longer piece would be so that they could all just go in there and love each other and be happy and get along and anticipate you grabbing one of them and filling it with thread. Okay, then we've got our oil and I actually don't use the stylus, but you know, if you're a stylus user, use it. And then we've got our straight stitch needle plate. So those are the things that I'm gonna put in there. Close it, remember, what, how do we not put this in? That's right, I'm gonna put it in half moon towards the front like that. Oh my gosh, there we go. Put this back, close it up, and keep this box as pristine as possible. Oh my, it's already making a terrible electrical noise. What could it possibly be? Oops. Now this is always the part where I kind of wish I could pick a different language to learn how to speak like German or something, but I, I'm just gonna pick English. That's the safe bet for me anyway. All right, so here's the screen and the screen is about the same. You should be able to recognize this if you have a 
plus machine or any of the new seven series, five series, even four series, um, there's only a couple of things. We've got a Wi-Fi button here that's new because we saw in some of those promotional videos Bernina did with Susan. How much do you love Susan, right? Anyway, she, um, you know, was playing with that uh, monitor or that Wi-Fi device with her phone so she could monitor, you know, the status of her embroidery. We're going to go over that in a different video just because, you know, this is brand new and we want to be like total experts before I show you that version. And then um, down here we have tension, presser foot, presser foot pressure, what needle plate do you have, feed dogs, are they up or down, bobbin status, and the laser. So this is the button that is gonna activate that little laser on your machine. So everything else on here is gonna be very similar. Now, we could peruse some of the different stitches. I, I'm gonna give you some total honest feedback here. I don't know all of the stitches that are on these machines. I have no flipping idea, but maybe you will spot some that you might not have on your machine. So let's just tutorials. I mean, I don't think that my 880 has mushrooms on it. I can tell you that. I, I'm not sure about that. Pretty sure it doesn't have Monstera. That's pretty cool. So yay, that's a win. And then we've got some multi-direction stitches and I think I kind of spot some that might be new. Ooh, 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 that one looks cool. I think we're gonna have to make a stitch book with these. Then um, let's just mosey down here and see if they added anything in the 2200s. I don't think so, I don't know. You guys can comment, let me know what you think. Did we add any more cities to this? Is Chicago on here or Naperville? They need a Naperville one. There's Chicago, I don't see Naperville. There's New York, USA. I don't see Montpelier, Vermont or I think we have some of you watching in uh, Chula Vista, California. I don't see that on here. Uh, okay, well, there's always hope for an upgrade, right? And um, so nonetheless, so we've got like some new stitches and things like that. And um, there's our alphabets, buttonholes, quilting stitches. And then, of course, our favorite stitches. This shouldn't have any favorite stitches on it yet. And a go back stitches now let's just see this is what they stitched out at the factory because i haven't even had my little fingers on this to stitch anything out yet so these are all kind of things that we know that we know about the machine but let's do a big deep dive and i'm going to take you on a tour of some of the other things with the machine so it just takes us a hot minute to get all the protective things off of this machine. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna rip it off. I don't save these things. Nope, 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 I throw them out. Sorry to say, this is gonna be a floor model and it probably will be my machine one day. So um, just let's, let's just dig in here and make it look pretty for you. In one of the BU videos, I talked about an improved pre-tensioner. Well, this is it. It's even different than what you might have on your 790 Plus Crystal Edition or the 770 case that came after the pre-tensioner. And, you know, I think it's really one of those things where sometimes the thread jumps out of here when we're going super fast, um, especially if you're like me and you do jackrabbit speed and embroidery. It just tends to just flop its little way out of there. And some of us don't like to use the thread socks on the thread because that kind of makes the tension a little bit tighter. So they've improved this. So that's like point one when we start threading the machine that you might notice a difference. So we're gonna get this thread back here behind our pre-tensioner, just like that. And I'm gonna wind a bobbin for you. I think you should know how to do this, but some of you might be looking at this machine that have never used a Bernina before or tried one. So you go around this little bobbin pre-tensioner and then we're gonna wrap the thread around the bobbin. And do you see how this bobbin, it's got the little disco things on there. That's that's what the sensor reads to make sure that the bobbin is spinning underneath. But you put your little bobbin on there like that and it fits perfectly. And then as you wind that little tail onto the bobbin, there's a little grippy stuff on there that just grabs that thread. So I can just cut it on the bobbin winder and then flip my little bobbin winder piece over and now it's winding. You might also notice that in addition to a noise that it's making, the screen is at 62. That's the optimum speed for winding a bobbin. But if you have some thread that's misbehaving like metallic thread or you have maybe some um, monofilament thread or something like that you even have the option to wind it a little bit slower so and and then just this is gail's um 
tips for you. Winding a bobbin too fast will stretch your thread and affect your tension. So on long seams um, and things like that, if you're getting some puckering and you just can't figure out why, you might wanna just revisit how fast you're winding your bobbins. All right, so excuse the wiggly camera, but I just couldn't get in here with the tripod. So there's a new thread take up on this machine. And you see that little black cozy that's on there. So when we thread, we're gonna get it, it's just gonna naturally go right in there. But if I move my hand wheel, I want you to see that little guy. That's very different. And then you're probably also noticing that the machine has a nice matte finish, just like my little fingernail right there. That was no mistake why I chose a little slate gray matte finish on my fingernail. But I, I like this matte finish. Um, other things that you'll notice that are different is um, there used to be a pattern begin uh, hard button right out here on the machine, but now they rearrange things a little bit to accommodate the needle threader. And I'm gonna show you how to use that. You're gonna love it. I'm gonna crank up the speed all the way to full blast there, everyone. And let's turn on our laser. Now, when the laser comes on, you don't really see it down there until you put fabric under it, but, but it's on. All right, let's get this camera back on the tripod and thread it up. So I am just gonna cut my bobbin off there, undo the thread from the tensioner, and then we're going down through our tension disc with my presser foot up. I still have the buttons here on the screen to lower the presser foot and bring the presser foot up. So it goes down through that tension channel there, up, and then a lot of people recommend, I am one of them, that you put the needle down to make sure that that needle gets seated all the way down and then you press it again to make sure that it's getting seated all the way up and um, that little grunting i just love that noise to me it sounds like it's just growling and getting ready for the day i don't find it to be um off-putting at all i love it that's how i know someone's been touching my machine too by the way all right so now we're going to go to the right side right in that little black piece i showed you down the left side and look at that it's right there in that thread tensioner and if it feels a little tight well that's because my presser foot is down so i can raise my presser foot there just like that and now i should it should be free pulling and now i'm going to go to this guide and now there's a new needle clamp and i know some of you are going to jump for joy over this one so right in there there's like a little bar that's gonna hold this thread tightly so that when the needle threader works, it's gonna thread every time. So all we have to do is just get it right behind that little guy like that. See how easy that was? And now we don't have to engage anything. There's no sensor on this that senses, you know, we're starting to thread and it's activating the needle threader, nothing like that. It's literally, you saw, we threaded it very similarly. If you even had like a, maybe even a three series, you know, like three, four, five, six, seven. But now our presenter is right here. So what we have to do is thread that through the presenter, cut from back to front, and just press a button. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. This bobbin is gonna load just like any of your other seven series machines. There's nothing, nothing, nothing different. I'm just gonna take out the white bobbin and put my red bobbin in here. And so we just put that down, just go down again under the little flat spring and in through those two wires like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I wanna change my foot to number 20C because I wanna do some applique using that laser to guide me. And then I, this machine, just like many of our other machines with this automatic presser foot up and down business, has a hover feature. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing settings and make sure that when needle down is engaged, I have hover on. And then I'm gonna pick one of my favorite stitches, which is 1309, and that's my blanket. So I have red thread in here, ready to go. I'm now gonna direct your attention down to the needle. And now you can see it there on that white fabric. So what I'm gonna do, 
I want you to really see this. I'm gonna move my needle position all the way to the right, and then I'm gonna widen my stitch to about 2.9. I have some stabilizer under here, and this is like a heavyweight batik, so we should be good to go. I just have stuck my little piece here that I'm appliquing just there, and I'm gonna start in a corner. And you know, let's be reminded, this isn't gonna go in the museum, but we just wanna kinda play around with this just a little bit. And then don't forget, I wanna make sure that I'm landing with my needle in the down position. So now, let, let's do it. And do you see how that little light is showing me where my needle is gonna go? Just there. And that way, I don't have to worry about anticipating anything. And now this, of course, is gonna be really handy for me and many of my garment making applications. I could see using this with a straight stitch to make sure I can stitch in the ditch just perfectly. Or perhaps I can also use this to make sure that I'm doing my buttonholes correctly. And now as we get down to here, I'm gonna land with that needle in the highest position. And now I'm gonna rotate over and see, I want my needle to land there. And I was able to just move that and see exactly where that needle is gonna go. And now I'm gonna pivot. And here we go. Oh, now it's gonna be just in the right spot. I can pivot. Now it's time to put on that embroidery module. Now here's the fun part. The embroidery module comes with the small, medium, and large hoop. And you're gonna get the number 26L, which I have here in that kit. And the 26L is really just more robust itself. It feels stronger. It feels like I can't bend it. How many of you have bent your foot because a horrible accident happened when something um, flopped over into your hoop and whatever, then you get this wick, wicked had jam and you just can't get it out and then your foot bends and then you think your needle's not centered position because that little small opening on the 26, it just was hitting stuff and whatever. Well, that's not gonna happen as easily with this foot. You know, we can't really say that's never gonna happen because there's one of you out that, that there that will figure out how to do something, you know? Um, but if I were you, I'd also reserve one of these things when they're available as a separate piece for your um, existing machine if, you know, you're not interested in upgrading or it's just not in your options right now. Also, you you know that little um, Wi-Fi capabilities and the baby monitor options that I'm talking about also are going to keep you from particularly having mayhem in soon at home. So you get the 26 foot and you're also going to get a package of little goodies and stabilizers from OESD in there as well as some other things we haven't even unboxed yet. But what I wanna show you are some of these cool features on the embroidery side. So I'm gonna put the embroidery module on, get this number 26 foot on there, and let's stitch something out. And I will be using the medium clamp square hoop. This is so exciting. That means there's new features that it's communicating about. Oh, can't wait. All right, now time to put the foot on. And we're gonna put the straight stitch needle plate on. I'm gonna pick just a quick little quilting design of some kind, something, you know what, I really love feathers. So I might pick one of these, but let's see what else is on here. And you know you can use these for more than just quilting, right? So let's just have a look here. Ooh, these are kind of fun. Ooh, I kind of like that. Oh my goodness. And notice that these all say BQM on them. Well, that's Bernina Quilt Matic. And the way that these work is actually not the same as the EXP files. So when we enlarge and reduce and morph these designs, I'm gonna do this with that four point positioning. 
you are going to see that you can set the length of the stitch like six stitches per inch, 24 stitches per inch. You have a little, and it's not the same as enlarging and reducing the design and having the machine kind of like try to redesign the machine in there for you. It's way more precise and way more accurate. If you do, or if you've ever used a Bernina Q-Matic system, you might've noticed that when you enlarge and reduce those quilting designs, they always look exactly the way you expect them to look per, you know, stitches per inch wise and, and everything like that. So I'm just gonna find a cute little design as we scroll through these. I found it right here, number 72. All right, so it doesn't matter what size this is. I need to tell it that I'm using my 26 foot and the machine doesn't know the difference between 26 and 26L. So when you get your Bernina 790 Pro, you're just gonna grab that 26. And then I'm also gonna tell it that I'm using the cut work plate and I could go ahead and close. And now everyone's gonna be happy. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that I'm using the um, clamp medium hoop, which is right here. There we go, close that. All right, and now I'm gonna go to my pinpoint placement. And remember, we used to have a grid, now we have morph. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch that one. It's prompting me to get ready to put my hoop on. Perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just say okay to that. And now this is morph and this is just four points. So we're gonna do this in just a minute. But as far as the morph goes, all I wanna do now is direct my attention down here to my hoop. All right, so there's our applique piece that we did and I'm just going to place this into position just like this. And I want to reset this machine on this square. And you know what, I have to be honest with you, I don't know if I cut this completely square, but I could take the time and try to rotate this in the machine and do all kinds of stuff, but Morph is gonna take care of this for us. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just reduce the design. And that requires me going to my uh, information button and my reduce and this is where I'm going to use my knob and just resize this so it fits in my hoop like that. Pretty easy. Then I go back to the I button, go back to pinpoint placement and choose the morph. Now I have a dot, a dot, a dot, and a dot. So I'm going to choose my first dot. I'm now going to use my top knob to move this to that top point of this tilted square. And you can see that laser pointing. You can see it right in there. And this is gonna avoid me having to turn the needle with my hand wheel. So once I have that into position, you can see it's moved it there. Once I like that, I'm ready to touch my next dot. And do you notice how I don't have to say set or anything? Yeah, there's no more set. I'm gonna use my knobs again to go over to this point right here. And you can see my little dot. I'm gonna move that over till it's right on the edge like that. And now I'm gonna to touch this dot and move it into position. And now finally, the other corner. Perfect. Now, because I don't wanna go all the way to the edge with this motif, I wanna go in a little bit, I'm gonna set the boundaries. And by boundaries, I mean margins. And I actually want it to be a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I'm gonna change my thread to white bobbin and white top. But before I do that, I also wanna point out to you that once we're ready to stitch, I have this little quilting design here. 
and that's gonna stop my jump stitches, stop things that could impede a very beautiful stitch out on the backside of my design. So I like to get in the habit of picking that. I don't have the, I don't care about what the back of this looks like, so I'm gonna leave my tension set at three, but this you would still manually have to adjust depending on what you're working on. Now my final thing is I'm gonna go over here into settings, into embroidery, into the quilting and right now this is set at 10 stitches per inch which is a little small for my like or a little long for a design like this so I'm just gonna go up and do 12 stitches per inch and then close and now I'm ready to stitch out And just like the other machines, this has the built-in basting feature with it, so you don't ever have to worry about your something flying out of your hoop or things like that. You can just baste when you're floating a design like I'm doing. And now we're just gonna do our beautiful quilt motif that we morphed. And I wanna stop for a second. Our other machines, when we do something quilt related, they tend to go back on themselves or stitch in place. And in general, uh, the Bernina embroidery machines do not like to stitch in place, so it can cause a little bit of nesting down there. So on this machine, rather than stitching in place to knot, it takes really close together stitches, much like you might do on your professional quilting machine and now that little stitch is not going to be ugly on the back side and we have presented prevented like a little thread nest and things like that all right so there's been no editing here and as you can see not one little bird's nest or anything under this motif everything is beautiful we can trim and oh my gosh what a game changer. And notice, I didn't even change the tension and look how beautiful it is on this backside piece. Let's explore how cool it is to write three lines of text. So I'm gonna just find a font I like. I want something, you know, Swissy looking. I think I'm just gonna go for this one that I always go for, how about it? So we have uppercase, lowercase, and all the symbols. So I'm gonna first on my line one, I'm gonna do my hashtag and go back to here and say A. Then when I hit return, I get two of two. So I'm gonna write big in all caps, then enter, and then day. And there is my big day. So now I can go into my information, go back to this word art that we've had on here, and I can space my letters apart using my top knob. Ooh, I like that. And using the bottom knob, I can squish them together. How cool is that? I can even justify them to the left, to the right, or center. And to be fair, I, I like it to the left like that. So now I'm gonna use my, I could use my pinpoint placement to get this exactly where I want it, but I'm honestly just going to use my virtual positioning here and touch my little hashtag right at the end. And I'm gonna use my knobs to move this around and just have it stitch like about right there. So I, I, this isn't gonna go in the museum. This is gonna be just fine, I think. So like I want that just about right there. And then I'm touching on my screen right down here just to make sure, ooh la la, that I'm not going off the edge. So I'm just gonna move this some more. That's good for me. Now I'll try it back over here. Oopsie daisies. Now let's try it down here. This might cause a problem, right? So now 
I was having a hard time getting it configured, even with virtual positioning. So let's do this. I don't wanna do anything super fancy and I don't wanna morph these words, but I'm gonna go ahead into our four point positioning this time. And I'm going to select the four point non-morphing position. And I'm gonna take my first dot there and I'm gonna move it down just like you saw me do, but this time I'm gonna move this down just kind of right there at the tip. If you can't see my little laser, it's right there. Then I'm gonna take my other point and I don't care where it is in that configuration necessarily. I just wanna make sure that it's away from my edge and kind of down a little bit. And I can see on my screen, there we go. And now I can see on my screen that the proportions are still intact. Now I'm gonna to touch at the bottom and I can go a little bit lower. And now let's touch at this other one. Okay, and I can lower that. So just to recap, what I've done on my screen is I kind of just drew kind of a little box that would fit in my space and now it's resized it to 80%. So now I'm just gonna simply stitch this out. All right, so as you can see here, this is not something that we stitched out, but I couldn't resist myself. I added a little heart in there because it is the 4th of July here coming up on Tuesday, and we're going to be open this year for you to come in between 11 and 3 and try the 790 Plus out. So I just want to leave you with one more thing for the sewing before we get to unboxing the rest of the stuff that the machine comes with. So a little something that we wanna do is just take a couple pieces. I just folded these to create an envelope back and I'm gonna use the side of my number one C foot and stitch around this piece, then turn it inside out for a cute little mug rug. All right, so I'm back and uh, thought it would be a good idea to open the embroidery bundle and the embroidery module suitcase because there's more goodies shoved in here. Now there's also the rolling trolley for your sewing machine, but that just has the rolling trolley. So I don't think there's anything in there, but there certainly is in here. And first there are your Bernina 7 Series um, skill course coupon code. Now, what is a skill course? Well, that's something that you're gonna hear directly from Bernina about, but it's a way that you can take mastery classes virtually through their consumer skill builder platform or the skill center. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but we'll be telling you more about that. If you register or, or sign up for the newsletters at Bernina.com, you'll also get direct information from them about that. So just keep your eyes and your ears peeled for that. Also in here is a maxi hoop you're gonna want this you're gonna need it and those of you that might be trading in a machine you're gonna be like well i already have a maxi hoop well i'm telling you something right now you're gonna have two did that sound very assertive of me well you're gonna want to because i always like to have one on deck hooped up and one then to you know have on the machine so you can like really do things fast because we got lots to do around here and little time to do it in right <laughs> and then um and then of course there's paper in here and you can use this to draft your, your patterns on, right? <laughs> All right, let's explore that embroidery bundle. My back is starting to hurt a little bit, just so you know. All right, here's the embroidery bundle. Now this is not a brand new thing sweeping the nation. Bernina has been producing these for a while, but it's been a while since we've shown one, so a good refresher is always a good thing. So in here, you get um, all of these different stabilizers. You get some designs from OESD, which is their signature library, volume two. You get um, 25 spools of thread with a gift card to embroideryonline.com, plus some organ needles. And this case that holds the thread, I, I love it. I'll take that from you if you don't want it. Um, expert tape, don't have to be an expert to use expert tape and you don't have to be a pro to have a Bernina 790 Pro because as we learned from Jamie, sewing on a Bernina 790 Pro will make you a pro, right? 
<laughs> and then we have all of these stabilizers and there's some foam down here. Oh, foam is good for the cosplay crew and the big book of embroidery. So let me tell you something. I hope that you enjoyed watching me play with this machine. I can't wait to make more things with it. And you know, this video demo might've been a little clunky, but don't forget, we're gonna be doing so many other of our own videos on this machine to inspire you, educate you if you purchase one from us, the whole deal. So we are offering a special pre-order promotion if you want a Bernina 790 Pro but it's not gonna last forever. You can only pre-order as long as we actually aren't getting stock into the store. So I would act quickly. So if you put money down on a pre-order, this is the only way you can get that free serger. We're doing a free L850 serger that's an air threading Bernina made serger with this machine. I can't talk to you here about pricing on YouTube, but I am sure you would love to come in and talk to me about it or call the store at 331-472-4231. Or you can send us an email at orders at berninafnaperville.com. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you come into Bernina of Naperville and I see you on Independence Day for our demos, or I hope to, you know, pick up the phone and talk to you. So um, for now, don't forget to check out our other tutorials on our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel, which is easy to find because it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. So happy sewing and enjoy a big day with me. Cheers. <laughs>